Hello everyone, what's up? It's me again, Junkmaster3. And uh, for today's video, I'm going to make a ranking video of all of the Halloween films, like in the Halloween franchise. So, uh, so now I've finally found, uh, watched all of them. Uh, so there's like 13, I believe, 13 films in total. If I'm not completely wrong. I mean, it's a little bit strange because they, with all the timelines and whatnot with these films, but uh, so I'm going to start this video by saying that this is a ranking video where I'm going to go through. Uh, go to from the uh, start with the worst one and then I'm gonna work my way up to the best one uh, So and to keep in mind. This is just my personal opinion um, And also I mean some of these films are not seen in quite a while This is just my memory of them the ones that I remember that I like the most and the ones that I like the least so uh, Yeah, keep that in mind. So uh, let's begin right away with the ranking video uh, The weakest one at number 13 if you will uh, this, I don't think this comes as any surprise, because I think this film is pretty darn horrendous. Uh, Halloween Resurrection. Uh, it's just so frustrating and annoying, that's what it is. And it's just like, this whole like TV show they're doing with the this Myers house or whatever, it's just so... It just feels so ridiculous, and the... Um, what's his name? Buster Rhymes? He is just obnoxious in this film. Um, yeah, like the... the um, the acting, I don't think, is very good, and I think the way they, they treated Laura Strode in this was really, really bad as well. Um, I'm just glad that they made more films out of this, even though I'm not really that big fan of those ones either. But, uh, yeah, Halloween Restriction, this is... I I did not like this one. Uh, I wouldn't say I despise it, but it's a very bad film, at least in my personal opinion. So, at number 12, we have the latest one, which is Halloween Ends. Uh, also, I just need to point out that there's... There could be some spoilers in this video, so I'm just gonna say that right away. Um, now, this film I watched quite recently. Um, yeah, this is this doesn't even feel like a Halloween film at all. It's like a continuation of Halloween Kills, and uh, the way that one ends and the way Michael is treated in this. I know it sounds strange when I say Michael is treated because he's usually doing the killing in these films, but uh, the way he's portrayed in this is just very strange. Like why they decide to do that because. In the, uh, in the previous film, like in Halloween Kills, they had a really bad time trying to kill him off. Like, and there was basically just the one one big mob that tried to kill him in the entire film. When those people have trouble with killing Michael, and there's like one one tiny little guy that can kind of fight Michael in this, it's just like, why? How is that even possible when you've already showed us before in the previous film that not even a mob could take him down? Uh, yeah, just a weird direction. I mean, I saw, I gave them, I kind of give them props for trying to do something else, but this doesn't even feel like a Halloween film to me at all. So, yeah, Halloween ends. Uh, very mediocre at, at best. Uh, the same thing, I mean, these are like really like interchangeable, interchangeable uh, uh, rankings because I mean, I could have picked this one uh, weaker than the other one. I think all these three films, uh, latest ones, are quite weak. Uh, but anyway, at number 12. No, not 12, number 11, sorry, is Halloween Kills. Um, this is, once again, is very mediocre. I would say the best thing I can say about this new newer trilogy is that I do like some of the blood and gore effects and the death scenes. I think those are really the highlight of these films. But as for the storyline, it's quite frustrating because you get, like in this film, you get some of the, uh, the uh, characters that are in the original one and that's the uh, the kid that Laura Strode is like babysitting in the original one he's grown up in this and he's played by uh, Anthony Michael Hall uh, and there's also the kid I don't remember her name but the other kid that also um, was uh, involved in that uh, in the first one uh, she's also in this one like in a new character uh, I find that quite irritating when Filmmakers just try desperately to like connect to like the original one like oh you remember you like this one Yeah, you automatically automatically you're gonna like this one as well uh, that, that really, It doesn't really feel like that's the way it goes, but um, As for that, I mean all that aside. I think the best thing about this entire film is Anthony Michael Hall's character surprisingly um, I mean, it's not like the character himself. I think it's just mainly because of his performance I thought his performance was really good in this uh, Laura Strode I this might be an unpopular opinion, but I think she is slightly overrated when it comes to Final Girls or like whatever, like Scream Queens and whatnot. I mean, I do prefer um, Nancy from Elm Street and I do uh, prefer, uh, what's her name, Sally from original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But uh, this one is, once again, it's a very mediocre film in general. It's just, it's whatever. Um, and then we have uh, number 10, we have 
the one that is just called Halloween. I never really understand why they just call it Halloween because there's like three films now that has that same title um, in this franchise. So that's just really strange. Um, yeah, this one is just, once again, I can say the same thing with the previous ones that I can say about this one. It's very mediocre at best. I do not care for Laura Strode's character in this. I find her kind of annoying, her character in this one. Uh, because I mean, the, in the original film, like the second film, she that character is very likable and really, really good in my opinion, like well written. In this one, I don't really understand what they were going for because this is going to take place. This takes place right after the original one, so they kind of skips the original second one. I know that's a really strange st uh, storyline without like the timeline, or whatever. Um, but I don't really buy into the whole fact that she just ditches her kids or whatever and then just moves in right into like a house in the middle of nowhere. Uh, yeah, her character, I don't like her character at all in this one, and Michael is like, whatever. Um, yeah, I think it also comes down to the fact, the reason why I prefer the Elm Street films and the, uh, and the, the Elm Street films in general over this one is that just that, I mean, Fred is just much more charismatic. I mean, let's be honest, Michael Myers just feels like a guy in a, in a mask. I mean, what's his characteristics? I mean, he doesn't really have that much charm to him. At least that's just my personal opinion. I still like the films, it's just that... Uh, that's just what I feel is a little bit of the weaker points of this franchise, but uh, Halloween, um, yeah, whatever. It's better than Halloween Kills and Ends, but it doesn't say too much. They're kind of on the same page. Um, then at number nine, we have Halloween 2, and this is Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Uh, this one is very strange to me because it's like one of those films that I do understand that it has its problems, uh, but it's just sort of like a weird, strange thing that... Uh, I find some of Rob Zombie's films really like hilarious and really like charming in a way. Um, this is just basically just Michael Myers going insane, going after every single person that wants him, wants to beat him up. I mean, it's just like his random, random killing, really. Or at least that's just what it feels like. Uh, I do understand this film has its problems, like I said before, but it still has some charm to it. Uh, I'm not too sure which version I watched. Um, uh, when I saw this, if it was the theatrical version or the director's cut, because apparently they are slightly different from one another. So, uh, but anyway, Halloween two, it is what it is. It's it's fine. And then at number eight, we have Halloween three, season of the witch. And sorry for this awful, awful release in the cover art, because I mean it's just a really terrible release. I have another release for this, which is way better and much cooler, much awesome, much more awesome cover art. Uh, I find it really funny that they shove uh, Michael Myers on the on the screen, not on the screen, but on the uh, cover art when he's not even in the film. Uh, if you don't count like that very small cameo he has on the TV screen or whatever. Um, and I think very many people seem to don't like this film mainly because Michael Myers isn't in the film. Um, and that's not really my biggest concern with the film. I just find it very... It's just all over the place. It's just something like with the editing and the storyline that just goes all over the place. That for me, that just I just didn't really understand the uh, the awesomeness to watch that. But uh, this is definitely a film that I can see myself rewatching. And I mean, for each time I've watched it, I've actually liked it more. So uh, if I you would have asked me for a couple of years ago, I would have said that this was trash. Uh, but uh, I do I've grown to appreciate it more, and I'll probably rewatch it even more times, and I'll probably bump it up a notch in the ranking, whatever. So. Uh, but anyway, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, uh, it's at number uh, 8. And then we have a number 7, um, Rob Zombie's remake of Halloween. Uh, apparently the unrated director's cut, don't really know what that means, if there's like extra gory footage or something, but uh, it was a while since I saw this, but um, I, yeah, I think this is quite interesting, very atmospheric, I really like the atmosphere in this film, that's really uh, the reason why this is slightly higher up than some of the other ones that I've already mentioned. Uh, because I think some of those lacks that special type of atmosphere. I do really think that Halloween 3 has uh, has uh, become better and better for each time. Like I said before, the atmosphere is great in that one. I think the atmosphere in this one is a little bit better. I like some of his uh, some of these characters that he shoves into this film. Uh, it, fa it feels very Rob Zombie-esque, if that makes sense. Um, now, the thing that I... The biggest concern I have about this film is that it's way too long. It's almost two hours long, and... I don't really care about the whole back, background story about Michael Myers in general. The reason why he was frightening to begin with was that you didn't really know what he was all about and who he was. It's just like a mystery type of guy that just goes around killing people. That is way more terrifying than actually knowing what he's actually 
did before or like or how he became why he became and that's just really just straight scary things that you just take away from that when you show that into your film uh but anyway that's just my that's a minor complaint about that that's like the biggest concern i had about this film but other than that i think it's a fairly entertaining uh remake so uh, yeah halloween uh rob Zombie's halloween at number uh seven now I can already see people getting like really frustrated and I don't have this higher up, but keep in mind I haven't seen this film for quite a while, so if I do rewatch it I might have uh, put it at number 3 or 4 or something instead. Um, but yeah, it's Halloween 2, the original one. Um, uh, this is, uh, yeah, number 6. Why I look at this direction is because I have the list ready right here, so yeah. Uh, yeah, Halloween 2. Um, Pretty darn entertaining uh, follow-up. Takes place right off of the first one. I think that is quite interesting because sometimes when it comes to these franchises, they kind of like jump one one or two years ahead of time or whatever, uh, right after the events of the first one or the previous film. Uh, I thought that was a quite interesting way to uh, start this film off. Um, yeah, it's a pretty darn entertaining film in general and I like the hospital setting in this one as well. So yeah, Halloween 2. And then I can already see people being really mad that I have this film so high up on this list. But I'm going to explain myself in a minute. Uh, at number 5 we have Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Now this one, I do understand why some people don't like this one. And I do understand why some people do like it. It's like one of those films that are... It's so strange that it becomes really, really fascinating to me. It's like one of those films that like it, it seems like they didn't really know, understand what they were doing. Uh, sometimes that can be a bad thing. In this case, I would say it's a good thing because it's like, it's so incredibly charming and very atmospheric. Sure, the story the storyline is just so baffling and so much all over the place that you get really like, like fascinated, like what is going to happen next? Like what what other weird thing are going to shove in this into this film? Um, yeah, it's like it is what it is. This is the last film that Donald Pleasance appeared in, uh, or like the last Halloween film, uh, because I think the last film he appeared in was that. Italian Jello film called Fatal Frames, which came out like in 95 or something. And I think that was around the same time he passed away. But um, I've only seen one version of this. I think it was the theatrical version. I'm not sure if it was called the director's cut or the producer's cut. I think it was called the producer's cut. And apparently that is very rare and hard to come across. Uh, so I think I've only seen the theatrical version of this. So apparently the producer's cuts have the uh, like extended scenes with Donald Pleasance in it. Uh, but yeah, this is what it is. I still like it for what it is. It's kind of charming 90s fun in a way. So yeah, Halloween 6. And uh, this one, at number 4, we have um, Halloween 5, uh, which is called... Um, what is it even called in English? Is it the return? The curse? Not the curse. What's it called? The uh, the revenge of Michael Myers. Sorry, I had to look in another direction. Um now I would say this one once again is has this high up on the list because of the atmosphere and some of the actors in it. I really despise the way they treated the character of Rachel, which appeared in the fourth one. I think she is a really memorable character. Um, so there is some. The, I mean, the way she they got she got treated into this film. It's just I didn't really like the way they they developed that character into this film. Uh, but I really like Daniel Harris in this film and. Um, the one another thing that I don't care too much about in this film is that uh, at a certain point it almost feels like a carry type thing. That's the main reason why I don't really care too much for Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven either, because it's sort of like that. Why shove a carry type thing into like a slasher franchise? I don't really understand the reason why anyone thought that was a good idea to begin with. Um, but yeah, this still has its charms and it has its nice kills. I also do not really care for the mosque in this one so but anyway it's still what is it is what it is and it's still an entertaining film nonetheless so yeah halloween 5 at number four and at number three we have halloween h2o which came out in 1998 i believe yeah 1998 and this is another one that has that t typical like 90s charm to it that i'm kind of have a soft spot for from time to time and uh, now this is I mean, like I said before, I don't care too much for Laura Strode as a character in the later fil films and whatever. But in this film, she is really great and really memorable. And her character is really likable as well. You like, just like like she was in the original 1 and 2. Um, I just wish they could have stopped the series right after this one, to be honest. Because who thought it was a good idea to continue this series with that abomination that is called Resurrection? 
Um, in, if you've seen the film, you know what I mean. It should have been the ending right there. I mean, that's a good ending for the series, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a really entertaining film, this one. So, uh, yeah, really entertaining. I win H2O at number three. Now, at number two, we have a film which... I'm not sure if it's just the 80s fanatic in me that really likes this film. But, I mean, it's just it screams 80s. I like the characters, and it's so atmospheric. Halloween 4, um, where it's sort of Michael Myers... Uh, from 1988, I believe. Yeah, 1988, at least according to the back of this DVD. Uh, now, this one, like I said, the atmosphere is there, memorable characters, great kills. Um, it just feels... I mean, the whole opening sequence, like with the opening titles as well, that really sets the mood for the entire film, in my opinion. That is a really great opening sequence, uh, or like opening credits sequence. And uh, once again, Daniel Harris is in this one. She's great in this one. And Rachel, like I said before, that was kind of like really mistreated in the later film, like or right after this one. Uh, I thought her character was really memorable and really great. Um, so uh, yeah, and the one thing that I don't care too much for about in this film, I think it was the uh, the mask of uh, Michael Myers, which was kind of like weird. It's like it was in the part five as well. It looked very strange. Um, but uh, maybe I just maybe I've just completely like forgotten this and that was actually only in the fifth one or in the fourth one i'm not really sure but uh this one though is i mean nonetheless it's a great great film in the franchise in general so yeah halloween 4 at number two and then finally comes a snow surprise the original one at number one um uh, don't really need to say too much else about this one it's a classic and it's like one of those films that really kicked start the whole slasher craze or the slasher friend um uh, slasher genre in general um, it wasn't the one that it wasn't the first, but it was the one that probably popularized the old genre. Uh, you can totally see that it has some influences from other films like the older Jello films and like older uh, slasher films as well. I mean, especially like I mean the first like American slasher, so like in general, I believe was the uh, Takes a Chainsaw Massacre and uh, what's that other one, uh, Black Christmas. But I think that's a Canadian production, so I'm not really sure. But anyway, and uh, there's also some of those older like. 60s, 70s Jello films or like the Italian ones that came before or whatever. But anyway, this one, uh, such a classic. And this one, Laura Strode is at its it's is at her best. Um, so Laura Strode in this one, in the second one, and in H two O are my favorite versions of Laura Strode. Resurrection and the newer trilogy can kind of like just go away. I don't really need to. Um, I don't really need. I mean, I don't really care too much for a character in those. So, uh, but anyway. Halloween, don't want to say anything else. I mean, uh, people already talked about this film to death, so don't really feel so necessary for me just to just say anything else about it. But, uh, you know, a original one, Halloween, number one. So, yeah. There you go. That's my ranking, my personal ranking of the Halloween franchise. And like I said before, it could be a controversial type of listing, like a ranking for me. Um, but it's like some of these films I've not seen in quite a while. Like I said before, the uh, Halloween 3 have grown on me, and it's probably going to be higher up on the list if I rewatch it again. The same thing I can say with uh, the original Halloween 2, which is sort of like in the same category. It's probably a film that I'm going to appreciate even more the more the more times I watch it, basically. So, uh, But this is how it is, as it is right now. So, uh, But anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed. And uh, yeah, keep your eyes open for the next video. So see you next time. Bye-bye.